this broadcast, please respond. My name is Nobody, and I am a survivor. I have an underground bunker and supplies, I repeat. If anyone can hear me, please respond. Good morning, evening, or afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome for our first look at the CB mod made by CB the Great. Great streamer, by the way, if you haven't checked him out, you should. This mod is dedicated towards being more hard than any other mod out there. It's more of a challenge mod. It's not necessarily for anybody who's not completely experienced. If you can't deal with always running, you shouldn't play this mod. Most of the zombies are able to run all the time they're mostly feral there's a major increase in zombie spawns and difficulty level of the zombies i recommend that you leave your settings down to standard settings for your zombies like your, your difficulty level this one i actually cut off airdrops and decided that i was going to leave everything else at standard okay so i'm going to read the beginning it says started basics of survival dear unprepared player if you're playing this you are either looking for a challenge or were goaded into this by what i can assume are really crappy friends here's the skinny there are tons of zombies not to mention the legendary beasts out there looking to rip you a new one keep your head on a swivel and you'll be fine well fine ish happy hunting cb the great a little foreshadowing I did actually record this earlier and realized that my mic was unplugged, so I'm just doing a voiceover for this so I didn't lose my footage, but there's a lot of dying in this video. This is a very good mod. It's very fun. I ended up killing myself a few times, and it wasn't really my fault that I died. It's just a really challenging mod, but with all that said, let's go on and move forward into the video, show you what I did. Now, to start with, I needed to finish up my initial quest, so the, the, the quests are changed a little bit. They're not the same ones you're used to. You get the gather plant fibers and all that, but you have to create three bedrolls and then move forward into some other quests that are totally different from your standard starter quests. So that's the first thing that he changed was the starter quests. And I like these starter quests a lot better. They're a little more challenging. They, they, they're not completely arbitrary. However, they are still somewhat arbitrary. At least this way, it helps you prepare for the mod. Like the need for you to actually create three bedrolls, I honestly believe is a good thing because you're gonna end up needing to drop bedrolls everywhere you go because of the difficulty of the zombies. You're better off if you you're far from base you're better off actually dropping a bedroll so you can get back to your bags now you need to pay attention to make sure you get the zombies far enough away if that happens to where they're you're not going to spawn directly where they are but that being said let's move on to the next quest so this quest requires us to basically craft a stone axe a stone spear and a battle axe this actually kind of makes sense you don't just want to do individual quests and drag out the, the quest line as much as possible so it's a good idea to put them all together into one you're making a tool and two weapons instead of just one however you do not get a quest for a bow in this game but i don't recommend using a bow as often because you've got mostly running zombies and you're better off using melee weapons against running zombies if you ask me and i believe that the mod author also believes that so i think that's why he put that in there overall i think that's a good change it, it makes the beginning seem a lot more realistic and streamlined the next quest actually requires you to make a bone shiv, which I think it makes a lot more sense than vanilla does because it actually gets you ready for what you need to survive. It'll get you getting food and allow you to get more stuff for paper in the future if you decide to do shotgun turrets. So this one actually makes a lot more sense. So far, all the quests that I've seen are better quests than vanilla, so I, I give kudos to cb the great and i'm going to go ahead and move forward until we get to where we want to drop our base because i want to show you how hard it was to actually get the base set up i recommend the first day that you're there just doing nothing but staying where you're at and gathering materials 
getting ready to create a base because once you start moving you're going to get into zombie problems and that's actually a really really bad thing you'll see what i'm talking about in just a minute because there's so many zombies in this mod it's probably a better idea to stay stationary and move at night that way they can't see you while you're looking for where you want to be uh i'm gonna show you that now when you find the place you want to be, go ahead and drop your sleeping bag and be very careful because there's going to be zombies all over the place. Now, one thing that I noticed uh, when I was doing a live stream last night was that it's probably easier just to go ahead and build you a forward base as soon as you land in and like build a platform up around you because zombies are going to spawn in after a while and there's a lot of them you're you're going to see probably at least 100 zombies before it's all said and done you're going to have to con consistently kill zombies as you build it kind of it's kind of like the old style of gnu mod with that but th like i said they're all over the place and you don't want to get overrun so you're going to have to constantly kill zombies as you see them they'll spawn in large hordes Sometimes they'll start coming towards you. Sometimes they'll just be around you. Now, he's really, really beefed up the number of zombies that you see in this. And I think it's awesome. But it also slows down your gameplay quite a bit. So be prepared for that. Now, you want to go on ahead and finish your last quest here. This is the Gather Large Bone and 10 Animal Fat. That's the longest quest that they have. It kind of makes sense, though, because you want to get started for everything else. Uh, you're going to need a light source for night and stuff like that. But... The way I did it on stream last night was I just built up a platform base as soon as I landed and moved out from there and started looting the areas around and found a house that I could hold up in for a while. That's actually a pretty good idea. It seemed to run a lot smoother than this. By day two, I actually had a forge going, so it's pretty smart to do it that way. Now, you're going to see a lot of uh, zombie killing in this one, or not killing, a lot of running from zombies in this one because they're all over the place. You'll get ferals, you'll get glowy zombies, you'll get all kind of stuff. And when you're finally finished clearing out the area, it's time to go in and set up your base. I'm going to move on forward to when I actually started my base up, and I'm going to show you the troubles that I had getting materials up for my base with all the zombies around and things like that. So when I went out to go gather the materials for my base here, just to get something built so I could survive a little bit better, I ran across a very, very large horde, and it seems like they're all over the place. So as soon as they spawn in, basically expect at least one zombie per 20 feet or so. That's how many zombies there are in this game. Now, you're going to run into issues about not being able to move very much, so that's where I recommend moving at night. I do that a little bit later in the video, and it helps out a lot because you don't get swarmed by zombies who can all see you during the day. The melee weapon that you, are, that you create for the quest seems to be the best one. That's the hammer. I believe it was called the stone battle axe that's the one to use now it will allow you to kill any zombie running at you you've just got to get your timing right so if you've ever used melee weapons predominantly then you're already set for this while you're gathering materials you need to keep an eye out because there will be zombies like you like i said if you can see them off on this little uh, the side of the screen here next to the the rock they're all over the place like everywhere you look there are zombies so be very very careful while gathering and make sure you don't do like i did a couple times and try to beat the rock with your your battle axe that's not a good idea either but once you finally get up the materials for your base you're probably going to want to do some sort of a platform or something that you can you can guard pretty easily in this video, I actually built a platform and spikes by the end of the video. So I'm going to go ahead and move forward to the next area. I can't remember right offhand, and I'm not fast forwarding to see, but I'm either going to be showing you a couple deaths that I did trying to gather materials or actually getting the base set up to start with. Now, I do want to hold off on this for a second and show you there are all kinds of zombies on day one. Like, you even get the burning zombies in the middle of the forest and some of them are feral. You also get the glowy zombies immediately on day one. So be very careful. It, he seems to have removed the entire game stage thing that's in the game and just basically made his own new zombie spawning setup which i like now if you can pull one of these guys off at a time that's a good idea because you can deal with one zombie it's when you've got 
three or four or more zombies coming up to you. In fact, on stream last night, I was dealing with like two or three at a time. As long as you keep moving, watch your stamina, and bring out the melee weapon, you should be fine. Just be very, very careful with it if you're trying to survive. Here comes my first irradiated zombie. It's actually an irradiated snake. They move a lot faster than normal, and this is also leading to my first death, so I want to show you this. Now, the zombies in this game, like I said, there's a lot of irradiated that'll show up on day one. You're not going to kill these guys. You just might as well get away from them. Now, while I was fighting this guy, I accidentally pulled another irradiated zombie back there. I don't even know why I was attacking this guy. There's no way I'm going to kill him. He's healing, I believe, as fast as I can hit him. He's also got a very, very large hit point, large hit points. So, basically, day one, avoid these guys at all cost this actually leads to my first death what happens here is i'm fighting this guy and i pull this guy this girl behind me and she just wrecks me i have to run from her there's no way to get away from her and i pull a lot of zombies and end up running out of stamina and dying if i remember correctly this is going to happen a lot if you pull the irradiated zombies the best way to deal with it is to find something to duck behind if you can once you got some distance between you and the zombies and hopefully just basically stealth out of them. It doesn't always work, but it sometimes does. I don't remember if I actually pulled that off here. I don't think I do. And running back to your corpse if you're far away from your base is going to kill you. That's just going to happen. There's no question about it because there's too many zombies around. You're about to see me pull a bunch of other zombies, if I remember correctly. But, yeah, like I said, you're not going to kill these zombies. I don't even know why I was fighting this zombie. I guess it was because I was so new to the, to the mod. I wasn't thinking about the fact that I'm not powerful enough for these guys yet. And I should have just been running for my life. Don't use up your stamina. Anytime you get below, I'd say probably... 40% stamina you want to try to start thinking about regening your stamina as quickly as you can sometimes you can't you're running from zombies and all of that so that's when you really really want to get to where you can hide because you're not going to outrun the zombies before you run out of stamina I think that situation can be this situation right here could have easily been dealt with if I would have gotten some distance between me and her and ducked behind a rock or something like that she would have lost sight of me and lost interest in me but I didn't do that, and she kills me. Because, like I said, there's no way you're going to kill one of these zombies on day one. You just don't have the weaponry for it. And you definitely don't have the hit pool to get hit a lot. Because your armor is too low. Now, here I pulled a bunch of them and am getting killed. So I'm just going to show you this real fast and then we're going to cut to the base and probably finish up the episode here. So I'm just waiting for me to die here so you can see how bad it is. And I'm also going to, yeah, there's a wolf here too, a dire wolf. So you got to be careful with this stuff. You see how many zombies I picked up trying to run from one. So you need to try to find your way to hide really quickly. That's death number one of I think I died like six times through here. I'm not going to show you all the deaths. I just wanted to show you how bad it gets. So there's no way out of that situation. And you don't want to get yourself stuck in that situation. So be careful. So in the interest of time, I've decided to speed up the playback on the video and show you the base build in great speed. I messed up a few times while I was building the base here, like misplacing blocks for my starter. So it's always best to have your spacers, such as your wooden frames, to count out the spaces and everything. But for some reason, I didn't do that. I think it was because I was low on wood and I didn't want to waste all the, the wood. But... I could have made up the wooden frames that I needed for the top to start with. I'm just building a quick platform base here in order to be able to have a safe spot to kill all the zombies from. And I end up dropping spikes down in here. Uh, while I'm doing that, I'm actually going to just basically give a rundown of the entire mod and my thoughts on the mod. And let you see how hard it was to actually build this little thing. 
Now, this mod is definitely not for the new player. This mod is definitely not for anyone who is not looking for a challenge. If you're not look if you're looking for a challenge, this is the perfect mod. If you're not looking for a challenge, don't play this mod. You will die no matter how good you are. I have never seen anyone survive this mod completely. So, that being said, the changes on the mod that I've noticed thus far I do know you can craft new weapons. I'm not sure about anything else like armor or anything. I'm pretty sure you can craft new armor. Anything that will help you survive, I think. The early game has been dramatically uh, increased in difficulty because you have all the zombies. I think it gets a little easier near the end, but it's still a lot harder than it used to be, which is good. And... I don't really know about the building yet. I haven't gotten that far into the mod at this moment. But the idea is... I think this mod is a really, really good thing. If you're looking for something to where it feels like you're just constantly bombarded and you've got to work through it. So if you're a fan of Gnu mod, you'll probably enjoy this mod for solo play. That being said, uh, the quests are different, which they make a little bit more sense. Uh, you've got better stuff that you can build for weapons and armor, which will help you out. So this, this does get a lot easier near the end as you get further and further progressed. I haven't checked out a Horde Knight. I'm looking forward to that episode. And I will be playing this mod for a little bit on the channel here. And if it actually receives a lot of love, then I will continue it probably as long as I did War of the Walkers. Because I enjoy this mod quite a bit. That being said, I will also be streaming uh, daily over on Twitch. Probably, usually 8 o'clock EST. I'm trying to come up with an actual schedule. So make sure to... Click the link down below in the description for my Twitch channel and go drop a follow over there so you'll be notified when I go live. Like I said, I'll be streaming probably at least two hours a night. We're going to be doing some multiplayer stuff and uh, I'm going to be doing this mod along with possibly continuing on Undead Legacy as well. So feel free to come by and chat with me while I play. That would be very much appreciated. I'm actually on the working on getting affiliate over there and I just need the followers. I've already got the average views but I need the follows. So I need 50 of them. So if you don't mind just go follow me over there. Even if you don't want to watch that would help me out quite a bit. And I will be playing this mod. I'll be playing Undead Legacy over there and maybe even some more of the walkers if enough of you want to see that. So just come over there let me know what you want to see and we'll figure out a schedule. Uh, whatever works best for the people and all of that fun stuff. Also, I definitely want to thank you again in case you didn't see the subscriber uh, video that I just posted. Uh, I hit 100 subscribers. I actually hit 105 subscribers the other day and it's been amazing. I've really, really b been enjoying doing my videos on YouTube as well as over on Twitch. I'm actually getting into live streaming on Twitch quite a bit. We've got some good music rolling in there. Uh, anybody who wants to come in can do the music too. So it, we're, we're just having a lot of fun over there basically. We have been playing some multiplayer stuff. Like I actually collapsed the base here. I just wanted to say that because I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. But anybody who wants to see that, come on by and hang out with us for a little while. It, it would be great to have you. And... I'll be doing a lot more of this over there. I'll probably be doing this one at least two to three days a week over there. And I will also probably be releasing a video for this one daily. As long as there's support on YouTube for it, I will definitely continue it. Now, I get a little further in this base build, but in the interest of time, I'm probably going to cut the end of it. Just I just wanted to show you that you still have to... You have to finagle a little bit. Like, I actually died a few times building this base. You're better off starting at night and moving around at night, which I failed to do because I'm me. But overall, this mod right here is an amazing mod for anybody looking for a challenge. Like I said, if you're not looking for a challenge or you're a new player, I recommend not playing this mod. However... If you are a new player that's looking for a challenge, this is a mod that's going to kick your butt, and if you like that, do it. 
overall, I'd say on a challenge factor, this is a 10 out of 10. On a playability factor, if you like a challenge, it's going to be a 10 out of 10. If you don't like a challenge, it's a 1 out of 10. And all of that said and done, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go on and drop a like. And if you haven't already, go on and subscribe. I will be doing more videos like this. I'm thinking about maybe even covering at least a first look at Darkness Falls as well. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. And I will see you tomorrow. As always, people, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like to show your support for the series. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see more, show that subscribe button some love. Be sure to click that notification bell to be notified of my daily releases. And maybe one of these videos on screen is of interest to you as well.